Hello everyone, Dr. Debs here, Dr. Deborah Williams. Welcome to my office. Normally when I do my videos, this is from my house. Normally heading to exercise or coming from exercise or in the kitchen. But I'm in office, so it's about midday and I'm about to have a cup of tea. Now whenever I display my herbs, I normally show you the fresh herbs that I pick from the environment in which I live up here in St. Mary, Jamaica. But there are many persons who cannot get these herbs from freshly picking them outside. But that's okay because we can always get our dried herbs from different sources, right? Go to the health food store and we can just get our herbs dried, packaged and ready to go. So for the last three weeks it has been very, very rainy and very cold in Jamaica. And today I'm noticing that my throat is feeling a little bit groggy. Mm -hmm. Starting to boost up the vitamin C. But it's a special herb I normally take when that starts happening. So if I find myself with you know, like many speaking engagements and the time is very cold, the house is very cold, you know, I wake up in the morning and the tile is very cold, this starts happening. What do you do? You have to boost up your vitamin C, right? That's simple as that. So this is a particular herb that I like to take when that starts happening. Whenever I start feeling this throat not feeling too too, you know, too too right, it's called it. Echinacea. So I want to tell you guys about my echinacea. Now this is a particular one I'm having today. Let me show you the box. Um, right. So this one is echinacea and lemon. Right. I know lemons are high in vitamin C. Right. So that's my tea. So if you can't go out and pick the bush, not to worry. Go to the health food store. Just get any of your dry herbs. There's so many brands in the market. Right. Now I'm going to read to you from my book the health benefits of echinacea. I love the taste of echinacea and I like this particular one because it's mixed with the lemon, right? Very, 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 very good. All right now, so the book I'm going to be using today from my office is this big book, right? It's called the Natural Remedies Encyclopedia. This is volume, this is the seventh edition. So I have many, many, um, uh, we call it now, resource books that I use as I practice and learn, right? We must all build our library and learn. Don't rely on people to always be telling you something. Buy your books, invest in your books and learn, okay? Now listen to the health benefits of this amazing, beautiful plant called Echinacea. Now, Echinacea is uh, the most effective blood and lymphatic cleanser of all the herbs. That's what the book says, right? And I've been using it for years and I can attest to the fact it is true. It really is very effective at cleansing the body and I use it a lot with my clients. Now it says it is, it is tolerated by the system in fairly large amounts. The plant is apparently non-toxic, right? Although in some people it may cause mild dizziness and nausea for a time. But combining it with a small amount of licorice root or taking the tea with one to two dates or even using a teaspoon of honey will help to minimize and reduce that impact on the body. Now listen to the uses of Echinacea, amazing plant that God has given us. It says Echinacea can be used internally or externally, right? It can be used for acne, for bad breath, for boils, for gangrene, infections, skin diseases, tonsillitis. It is said to be effective against all types of insect bites, okay? Internally, Echinacea can be used for bladder infection, blood poisoning, blood purifier, fevers, inflammation of the mammary glands, intestinal antiseptic. It's also very good for lymphatic congestion, venereal diseases of all chronic and acute bacterial and viral infections. Echinacea, it says, has been used for years for syphilis and for gonorrhea, right, in a douche, and it is inserted in the vagina, and we just simply use it that way. Now, the echinacea is also said to rid the body of pus, abscess, formation, and for thyroid fever. Echinacea is good for flatulence, right? And it's a very good digestive aid. Echinacea is an excellent antibiotic and ranks with golden seal and red clover. So golden seal and red clover are two herbs I use a lot because they're natural antibiotics, right? Um, so whenever there's bacteria or viral infections, you know, any germs, any pathogens impacting the body. I put my clients on the echinacea or the golden seal or the red clover and there are many others that we use. 
but we never use them more than seven days at any one time, right? And we always use one teaspoon of the herb to eight ounces of boiling water. If it is a leaf, we simply do an infusion. If it is a root or the stem or the bark, we do a decoction, meaning we boil them, right? Now it says, externally, echinacea is used for acne. Note, do not use the root once it has lost its odor. So you have to also be careful when you buy herbs at health food store that they, they haven't had these herbs there for years and the herbs are old and they've lost their potency. So have to look for dates, expir expiration dates, when we are buying our herbs. So my throat was feeling a little groggy this morning and I'm telling you, Echinacea tea, so I'll have one cup, no, it's about 12 o'clock. I'll have another cup later on, maybe about 4 or 5 o'clock, right? And I find that whatever is happening down here, it just clears it up quite quickly. So that's it, that guys, from Dr. David's office, as we now look at herbs, not just from the garden, but herbs from the health food stores that are dried and packaged and they're safe to use. Now you know you're not leaving my office without a word. <laughs> the word. Oh yes, my Bible is always on my desk. So, from my reference, Bible, this is always in my bag. Yes, whether it's home or in the office, wherever I go, I take my word with me. I'm going to share a short word with you. I'm looking at Isaiah 48 and verse 10. Short but potent. Listen to this. It says, Behold, God speaking, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. What does God mean by choosing you in the furnace of affliction, my brothers and my sisters? Well, let's see what the commentary says in this Bible. Alright, so the commentary says, purpose of trials. That's the heading. Many who sincerely consecrate their lives to God's service are surprised and disappointed to find themselves as never before confronted by obstacles and beset by trials and perplexities. They pray for Christ-likeness of character, for firmness for the Lord's work, and they are placed in circumstances that seem to call for all the evil of their nature. Does that sound familiar? All right. Faults are revealed of which they did not even suspect the existence. Like Israel of old, they question if God is leading us why do all these things come upon us? Question. Haven't we all asked a question? Lord, I'm falling, you know. Lord, I left the world. Why everything seems to be going wrong? Listen carefully to the answer. It is because God is leading them that these things come upon them. Trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. All right. He who reads the hearts of men knows their character better than they themselves know them. He sees that some have powers and susceptibilities which, rightly directed, might be used in the advancement of his work. In his providence, God will bring these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which has been concealed from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunities to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. Often he permits the fires of affliction hmm, to assail them that they may be purified. Lastly, she says, the fact that we are called upon to endure trials shows that the Lord Jesus sees in us something precious which he desires to develop. And that's coming from our book, Ministry of Healing, page 470 to 471. Our Lord loves us. Afflictions will come. Trials will come. But we just read it. God allows it because there are things in us that are not of God. And God allows the trials to come to purify us. Purify us in the fires of affliction. But he never leaves us in there. He's always watching over us and he doesn't give us more than we can manage. Let us pray. Loving Father and our God, we thank you for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for this plant called Echinacea. Thank you for all the wonderful medicinal properties, Lord, that you've placed in the plant. Even as you have said in Ezekiel 47, verse 12, that the fruit be for our meat and the leaf of the trees be for our medicine. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Even here at our midday hour, we can open your word and just be, be, be
be washed with it, Lord. Be comforted that no matter what our trials are, our afflictions, our God never leaves or forsakes us. And you allow it, Lord, because there are things in us, which is not of you, that must be purified, must be removed from us. And so, Lord, we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that truly we will develop characters looking just like our Heavenly Father. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your patience, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your angels who minister unto your people. Is our prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There you go, guys, from Dr. Deb, midday in my office. Have a wonderful rest of the day as I continue to have my, my Ebenezer tea.